half hour of news and information. That is just six minutes away on Radio Live. Bernard Hickey, good morning with business. Good morning. I see, I'm just reading here on an email, a 62-year-old retiree gets a hole-in-one on the first swing of the first hole of the first run of her life, and she says, I thought all golfers do this. So <laughs> obviously had no appreciation it was a hole-in-one. Anyway, but, uh, Bernard, it looks like Fisher and Paykel, well, there is some good news for them, they're going to be around. That's right. Uh, late on Friday, they announced that their banks had given them a new line of credit, $80 million, and this will keep them going for the for the next wee while because they had actually breached their covenants. And a covenant is like a rule where you always say to the bank, I'm going to have three times the cash flow of my interest payments. And they'd breached those. And so the bank was within its rights to essentially put Fisher & Pike Appliances into receivership. They haven't done that. They've waived the covenants and they've said, here's $80 million to keep you going for a while. Fisher & Pike Appliances is not out of the woods yet. It still needs to find a strategic uh, in- investor and it will try and do that. And it will probably shut down more of its operations in New Zealand and try to sell its East Tamaki plant, although hope to sell it and stay in it with a lease. Okay, so sell it to someone else and then rent it back from yeah. them. That's yeah. a, they'd get $80 million for that, would you? Well, the trouble is this, um, you have to promise to be in there for a long time. Well, they and, might be. And, and anyone who's got that factory after Fisher & Vital Appliances leaves may struggle to fill it. This is all these covenants are because they're a public listed company, is that right? Oh no, anyone who's okay. uh, borrowed money, a, a serious amount of money from the bank, um, is told by the bank what it can and can't do, and they've breached a couple of those. Tony O'Reilly, the former lion, the former um, Irish winger, he's announced he'll retire as Chief Executive of Independent News and Media. Is this big news? Well, it is because he owns a significant shake of stake in the Irish company, which itself owns a stake in APN, which owns New Zealand Herald, and a good chunk of the New Zealand Herald's profits have been going back to Tony O'Reilly's empire in Britain and particularly to support the independent, which has never made money. And now he's stepping aside as the CEO of that company. He's looking to sell it. He's got big debt problems. So there's a lot of pressure through that chain to uh, NZ Herald and also to the radio network, which is half owned by uh, APN. And of course, the other half owner, Clear Channel, has got its own problems with debt. So there's a lot of pressure coming from the Northern Hemisphere. And this is another way in which the credit crunch is filtering its way through to New Zealand. Companies here who are owned by offshore companies that have debt problems are having to work that little bit harder to churn out that little bit more cash to keep the bankers happy in the Northern Hemisphere. So they've got the thumb screws on him here just to pay off his, 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 his trophy publication, which is The Independent. That's right. Ask anyone at the New Zealand Herald or Radio Network uh, how, how, how tight those screws are, and they're tight and getting tighter. Because um, he has a lot of debt and because he's got this newspaper, daily newspaper in, the, in Britain, which is a, um, a mental piece. It's something on his mental piece. I own a, a daily newspaper in Britain and it has never made money. And it's been paid for by the good advertisers and readers of Auckland for a long time. Carol Rama speaking about China. This um, is a very in- yeah, interesting you've story. Got on, you've always gone on about this. I didn't, yes. I didn't say to her, we've got Burden's been banging on this for years <laughs> because she doesn't know who you are. But. Yeah, but, but it's, it's true what she says about coming out in the open. We've all known, we've all feared this idea that China, which has been essentially lending the money to America... To has it been the government spree, that's been lending the money? Through the central um, uh, bank and through the um, sovereign wealth funds that uh, China has. And now they've said, hang on a minute, We've got a trillion dollars in America. Are they going to pay us back? And uh, it's time for us to exercise that power. And so we have China going to America and saying, are you running your economy properly? <laughs> the irony of it, you know, a, a capitalist, um, a, a, a communist country run by a dictatorship going to the ultimate capitalist country in America run by a democracy saying, uh, you better make sure you keep paying us back. I mean, it, the 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 the, um, the irony of it is, is amazing. If you can imagine during the Cold War, uh, Russia going to America and saying, "You're not doing your job well enough," being a capitalist country. Why does China have a trillion dollars to lend? Well, they have built up an enormous amount of money uh, by selling stuff to America and running trade surpluses. Good, good answer. So they they have this a, a real problem, I suppose, in that they've done so well exporting to America. They've got so much money. It was in US dollars. They've kept it in US dollars by buying US bonds. And now, the crunch is on. AIG before you go. Oh, this is astonishing. This is a, com- a, country, a company that has borrowed $165 billion from the US government and is still paying its executives, these guys who got them into all this trouble, 
almost half a billion dollars in bonuses. Now, we've heard over, further over the weekend that they, they've decided to row back on some of these bonuses. But this is going to cause a riot in America if this stuff goes on. The public of America, if you can imagine us, we were paying, you know, um, a good chunk of our GDP. It's upwards of 10% now of GDP to banks and others who have failed. And yet they're still paying the executives enormous bonuses. We're talking multi-million dollars. We'd be rioting. And I don't know why they haven't quite rioted in the States yet. Maybe Obama is, is keeping them quiet for now. But uh, this is the, the makings of, of real civil unrest and anger when this stuff goes on. That's, that's the Bernard we like, civil unrest and <laughs> anger. There you touchstone. Seven o'clock. Thanks, Bernard.